Welcome to our second weekly Lenten devotional video series that we will post every week around lunchtime on Monday. We've had one so far last week. If you missed it, I encourage you to find it and go back. And we hope that every week, as you begin your weekdays or your work week, that these brief video reflections will give you some focus and some intentionality as you prepare your hearts for the week and prepare your hearts for Easter. Our scripture reading for today comes from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 3, verses 15 through 20. As the people were filled with expectation and all were questioning in their hearts concerning John the Baptist, whether he might be the Messiah, John answered all of them by saying, I baptize you with water, but one who is more powerful than I is coming. I am not worthy to untie the thong of his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand to clear his threshing floor and to gather the wheat into his granary, but the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. So with many other exhortations, John proclaimed the good news to the people. But Herod, the ruler, who had been rebuked by him because of Herodias, his brother's wife, and because of all the evil things that Herod had done, added to them all by shutting up John in prison. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Spirit of God, descend upon my heart. Wean it from earth, through all its pulses move. Stoop to my weakness, mighty as the You would think that, at least by now, some 2,000 years after Jesus preached and died and rose again, that now his good news message would be accepted as great good news by everyone everywhere, you might think by now. And yet, we know that is not the case. Just as it was during New Testament times, so it is still today that sometimes people do not welcome God's good news. And that's because, as the verses we read remind us, there will always be 
a Herod, or maybe even a few Herods. The one mentioned in our verses wasn't even the Herod from the Christmas story that tried to kill the baby Jesus. This is a different one. This is his son, a different Herod. There will always be Herods, always people who don't like to hear the good news that forgiveness is offered to all people. The great news that everyone is loved. There will always be Herods. Jesus was, would sometimes say when he would get upset at the pushback against his good news message, he would say, oh, you brood of vipers. And there will always be broods of vipers. There will always be snakes who hiss their dislike when God's great love is shown and spread around. There will always be Pharisees who don't like the folks that are invited to God's big table or who don't like the changes that Jesus' mission and message will bring. There will also always be evil in the world. And when evil is threatened by good, then it lashes out even more viciously and harmfully when it knows that it is under threat. No one likes to be called out when they are being immoral or hurtful or unjust or uncaring. That's why John the Baptist was thrown into prison in our text because, as you heard it said, Herod wanted to shut him up, didn't like being called out. No one likes to hear convicting messages that say they are in the wrong. Remember what we talked about last Monday for our reflection, that repentance can be uncomfortable. So most people will resist it by any means necessary. That burning fire John talked about is something that most people will try to avoid. So, since that's the case, what do we do? If demonstrating the good news of God's bold love might make some folks upset, should we be quiet? We don't want to cause a stir. We don't want to offend anybody. Should we keep the knowledge of God's amazing grace to ourselves and not share it around? Mm. One theme of the season of Lent is honesty. Being honest with yourself and about yourself. It is a convicting process, but one that ends with grace and love for you and everyone. Well, you can expand that theme of honesty outside of yourself and into the rest of the world. So I want you to be thinking how you can help others experience some honesty in their lives and in our lives together by using God's grand love as a looking glass. Even if they don't like the convicting pain that they might feel at first, the burning of that purifying fire that might be uncomfortable. It is part of a refining and purifying process that is necessary and that is good and that will leave them and us better and more beautiful than we ever were. Let us pray. Oh God, we confess that we have not always been the sharers of your good news. We confess that sometimes we are fearful and are awkward about how others might react to it. So we confess that sometimes we have stayed silent. Or sometimes we ourselves have try to avoid the burning fire of your refining process because we are scared or uncomfortable about what might be involved and what might be revealed. So remind us, O oh God, 
that when you purify us, what is revealed is only the pure beauty of a child of God. And your grace and forgiveness burns away all of the rest for us and for everyone. Amen.